Good morning. Welcome to Ceramic Storytime with Sue. Today we're going to read my blog post called How to Convert Kaolin to Calcine Kaolin. So I'll just give everybody just a couple of moments to join live and I just want to confirm that you can see and hear me before I get into this. So I see that I'm live uh, on my other screen. So let's just unmute myself. So, <laughs> okay. I've confirmed for myself that um, I can see and hear myself, but if you're joining, uh, please just let me know that you can see me and hear me, um, and then I will get started. So it's a beautiful day here on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Um, so I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. And if you are here live, just please make a comment in the comment section and just say hello, let me know that you can hear me, and then I'm going to get started. Um, we're talking about calcine clay today. Um, so we're going to talk about crawling, um, which is one of the main issues that you can solve by calcining some clay or by substituting some of the clay in your recipe with calcine clay. So I'm going to explain um, why you would want to do that and um, how to do that, how to make the substitution in your recipe, that sort of thing. Oh, Kareen. Hi, Kareen. So you can see and hear me, I guess. Um, good to see you. So I'm going to just roll with it. So if you can't hear me, please let me know. <laughs> Um, that doesn't make any sense, but we'll just keep going until I hear otherwise. Okay. Yes, I can. Perfect. All right. So if you want to follow along, the link to the blog post is bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash calcine kaolin, and that will take you to my blog post. Um, so I'm just going to pull it up on my screen here. And um, so that link will take you to my website and this blog post, how to convert kaolin to calcine kaolin. So as I'm reading the post, you're welcome to comment in the comment section, um, ask me any questions that you have and I will answer them as we go along. And then this video will be available here in the Facebook group. And then I'll also be uploading the video and the audio version up to this blog post on my website. So those will be available to you um, afterwards. So if you are watching the replay, welcome. And please also, um, if you're watching the replay, you can also comment and ask questions and I will come back and respond to you in the comments. So let's get started. How to convert kaolin to calcine kaolin. So for the purpose of this article, I'm going to use the words clay, kaolin, and EPK synonymously. So um, kaolin is clay. Um, EPK is a brand of kaolin. So EPK stands for Edgar Plastic Kaolin. And so that's just the brand name, the company name that um, mines and uh, distributes the kaolin. And so um, kaolin is a type of clay. Other types of clay are ball clay, fire clay, bentonite. So those are just some terms for you. If you want to download this blog post as a PDF, um, you can do that here. You just click this link and then you'll have to enter your email address and then it'll be sent right to you. Um, and let's get started. So the issue, if you have too much clay in a glaze recipe, you might have issues with your, with your glaze crawling during the firing. Crawling is where the glaze pulls away from the clay body due to a combination of shrinkage, poor adhesion, and high surface tension. 
Because clay shrinks as it dries, a high percentage of clay in your glaze recipe will cause the glaze to shrink. If it shrinks too much, it will crack. This loosens the glaze from the surface of the clay body. So as you can see, this photograph shows the glaze before the firing and it is all um, it's all cracked because of the high percentage of clay in this glaze recipe. And then the clay shrinks, the bisque that the glaze is on doesn't shrink. And so when the glaze shrinks more than the bisque will allow, then it cracks to relieve the tension. And here is a more extreme example. Um, so this pot made it into the firing. This pot <laughs> we left out. And so this person had to uh, rinse the glaze off and start again because the glaze completely fell off here. Um, and here's another example. This piece would not have been fired. Um, these are just pieces from the studio where I work. Um, so these are examples of glaze cracking as it dries due to shrinkage. This can happen with high percentages of clay in a recipe and also from thick glaze application. So these issues can also happen if you just have too many layers of glaze or if your glaze application layer is too thick. If the cracking is severe, bits of the glaze will fall off the pot before the firing. If you notice your glaze cracking at all, your best bet is to rinse it off, let your bisque dry out, and then glaze again with a thinner application. Check your glaze's specific gravity before adding water. It may need to be deflocculated. When we fire these cracked glazes, the glaze continues to shrink. The surface tension of the glaze is stronger than the adhesion of the glaze to the clay body. So glaze, as it shrinks, it has surface tension. So if the adhesion of the glaze to the clay body is higher than the surface tension, then the glaze will um, stay where, where it's put. But if the surface tension is higher than the adhesion, so if the glaze shrunk before the firing and it kind of loosened the glaze from the clay body, then that shrinkage will lead to crawling. So the glaze contracts and pulls away, exposing the clay body underneath. This usually happens with over 20% clay in a glaze recipe, which is common with matte glazes. So matte glazes often need um, a high proportion of alumina and um, clay or EPK, kaolin, is uh, our main source of alumina in a glaze recipe. So here we have, like, sometimes you'll just get little slits in the glaze. Um, so that's just like mild crawling, although this would still totally annoy me if that was uh, on one of my pieces. And then here's a more extreme example of crawling where the glaze like completely pulled away. And so all of this is the clay body showing underneath. And here's another extreme example where the glaze was just really thick um, and it would have started cracking before the firing and then crawling during the firing. Another excellent use of calcine kaolin is in your kiln wash recipe. If your kiln wash flakes off really easily, it's probably due to the clay content in the kiln wash recipe. Again, the clay shrinks as it dries and as it's fired, and then it cracks to relieve the stress. So replacing some or even all of the clay in your kiln wash with calcine clay will solve that issue. You can experiment with different amounts to see what works for you. Um, I also have a blog post about kiln wash. Uh, you can search Google for that. Um, if you need a better kiln wash recipe. So the solution is to replace some of the clay in your glaze recipe with calcine clay. Calcining is where the kaolin is fired to a temperature hot enough to remove the chemically bound water molecules from the clay particles. So this is the chemical formula for kaolin here. So we have one molecule, whoops, one molecule of alumina, two molecules of silica, and two chemically bound water molecules. And so chemically bound water is water that um, doesn't have the ability to evaporate. Um, it has to be heated to a specific temperature. Um, I believe it's like 500 Celsius or something. 
I forget what the temperature is, but it has to be heated to a fairly high temperature in order to drive this water off. So clay has physical water, um, and then it also has chemically bound water. And these chemically bound water molecules are what give clay its plastic properties, plasticity, so we can form it and shape it, and it, and it sticks together. So these water molecules help the clay particles to stick together. So when we fire this um, kaolin molecule hot enough, then we remove these two chemically bound water molecules and we are left with just one molecule of alumina, two molecules of silica, and we have calcine kaolin. So this pre-shrinking of the clay reduces the shrinkage of the glazes as it dries and as it's fired. So because the clay is pre-shrunk, then you're not gonna have those issues during the firing or while the, while the glaze is drying where it's shrinking and then cracking to relieve that tension. Say you have a recipe with over 20% EPK and your glaze is cracking or crawling. You can replace some of the raw EPK with calcined EPK. You don't want to replace all of it. We require uncalcined clay in our glazes because clay is what keeps all the other glaze materials suspended in water. Once the clay is calcined, it loses its suspending properties. So these water molecules also help um, to keep the clay suspended in the bucket. And once we remove those chemically bound water molecules, then um, it loses its suspending properties and it's just um, is gonna sink to the bottom. And so it's not gonna help to keep your glazes in suspension, which is why um, we need to have clay in our glaze recipes. So I try to keep my raw kaolin, my uncalcined kaolin percentage um, between 10 and 15%, and then I'll calcine the rest. So if I come across a glaze recipe that I want to use and it has 30% clay or EPK in it, then I'm going to keep about 15% of that clay uncalcined and then the other 15% I'm going to calcine it. And I will show you um, how to do that, the substitution in a recipe because it's not a one-to-one -one substitution. How to calcine your own kaolin. Uh, so kaolin can be purchased and pre, um, pardon me, kaolin can be purchased pre-calcined and it's sometimes sold under the name Glomax. So you can purchase clay that's already been calcined so you don't have to calcine it yourself or you can calcine it yourself and it's quite easy to do so. Um, it's, it's also much cheaper to calcine your own clay. Um, so, for example, where we get our supplies um, at Green Barn in Vancouver, or well, we actually get our supplies from Vancouver Island Pottery Supply, um, which are um, part of Green Barn. Um, so the price for a 50-pound bag of calcined clay, calcined kaolin is $106, whereas regular kaolin is only $35 for the same amount. So it's much cheaper to just buy the regular EPK and then calcine it yourself. And you can calcine your own EPK by putting it through a bisque firing. So you just need to fill a bisque fired bowl um, or a lidded vessel to reduce the dust with EPK and put it in your next bisque firing. When it comes out, all the, all the chemically bound water will be driven off. The kaolin will be very light and fluffy, so use caution. Wear a respirator when you take it out of the kiln and immediately put it into a sealed container. Label it as calcined EPK and use it for substituting EPK in recipes. So um, at the studio where I work, we have these um, big jars with lids that we use just for calcining EPK. Um, and so we have a lid on top because um, when it comes out of the kiln, it's really light and fluffy. And so when you just like pick up the container of calcined EPK, um, the dust, uh, it's possible that the, for the dust to um, float into the air. And so um, as to prevent that, because 
Um, lots of people are unloading our kilns and we want it to protect their safety. Um, so we just put a lid on these vessels. But you can just use a bowl, any, any bisque um, container or pot, you can fill with EPK and stick it into your glaze fire or your bisque firing, pardon, and that will calcine it. So now we're gonna get into the substitution. So using the Unity Molecular Formula or UMF to substitute EPK for calcined EPK. When replacing EPK with calcined EPK in a glaze recipe, we can't do a one-to-one -one substitution gram for gram. This is because EPK loses some of its mass, water, H2O is water, during the firing we have to account for the chemically bound water that was driven off. And this is called LOI or loss on ignition. So let's see what happens chemically if we do a straight trade gram for gram. I created this glaze on the site glazy.org with 25% EPK. Note the analysis, specifically the silica and alumina levels. So here on the left, we have uh, the glaze recipe with the percentages. So we've got NFSI 34%, EPK 25%, whiting 18%, grizzly borate 12, silica 11. So that's the glaze recipe here. Then over here, we have the UMF, the Unity Molecular Formula, which breaks down your glaze recipe into um, the various oxides that it's composed of. So we're looking at the alumina and silica levels because um, those are what the EPK is supplying to the recipe. So we've got 0.54 alumina, um, that's moles or molecules of alumina and 2.34 moles of silica. So if we subtract 10% EPK, so we reduce the EPK to 15% and then we add in 10% calcined EPK, notice how the alumina and silica levels have changed. So they've both gone up because we're adding 10% calcine kaolin, which is pure silica and alumina. It doesn't have that chemically bound water, which takes up some weight. So if it still had the water, um, we would be getting less alumina and silica in the recipe. So up here, we've got 0.54, 2.34. And then down here, we've got 0.6 and 2.4. So this shows, so we still have 25% kaolin, but because this 10% is calcined, um, it just changes our recipe a little bit. So we have to account for the the chemically bound water molecules that have been driven off. Um, Mary Lee says, what cone do you have to reach in your bisque firing to calcine the EPK? Um, I know that the, the temperature is much lower than um, any temperature that we're normally bisque firing to. So if you're bisque firing to um, cone 012, 010, 010, 08, um, that is all hot enough to drive off the chemically bound water. So most of us bisque fire between cone 06 and 04. Um, so that's perfectly fine. But even if you're um, at a, a little bit lower temperature, um, then you should also be fine. <clears throat> okay, so the silica and alumina levels go up because when we remove the water, we have a higher concentration of everything else, silica and alumina. We have to reduce the number of grams of calcined EPK to get the equivalent chemistry as with the raw EPK. By reducing the calcined EPK to 8% instead of 10%, my analysis now matches the original. So here um, is this recipe, and so I just changed the 10% to 8%, um, and now we have the alumina and silica 0.54 and 2.34, which are the same as our original recipe here. Um, so that was uh, replacing 10% kaolin with 8% calcine kaolin. Now I have an edit here. Um, so glazy.org uses generic 
a generic chemical analysis for calcined kaolin rather than the analysis for actual calcined EPK. So kaolin is just um, a type of clay, whereas EPK is a specific type of kaolin and it has its own chemical analysis. So not all of our materials are all exactly the same chemistry wise. And so it has a actual EP. K has a slightly different chemical analysis than a generic form of, of kaolin that they had on Glazy when I, I wrote this blog post a few years ago. Um, so actual EPK has an LOI loss on ignition of 14.81%. So it would be more accurate to use 85.19% calcined EPK to replace 100% um, uncalcined EPK. So in this example, replacing 10% regular EPK with about 8.5% calcined EPK. Um, so, and you can, and you can use glazy.org to do this for yourself. So you just, um, you would just enter your recipe with, um, with all the regular EPK um, and then you can copy your recipe and then you can um, subtract some of the EPK and then add back in calcined EPK. And then you just want to make sure your silica and alumina levels match your original recipe. And, um, and so that's how you do a material substitution. So, um, or you can just use 8.5. So for every 10 grams of regular EPK that you remove from the recipe, you want to add back in 8.5 grams of calcined EPK. So the recipe total is now 98%. Um, and you can leave it like that, or you can get glazy.org to normalize it back to 100% for you. So there is a little 100% um, button on Glazy that you can push. So when you're um, changing your recipes around um, and you come up with a new recipe and it doesn't quite add up to 100, so it might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less, then there's a 100% button that you can press and that'll change all of the amounts so that it adds up to 100%. And that's called normalizing a recipe. So when we normalize it, we normalize it to 100. Um, that just means that everything stays in the same proportion, but um, it now adds up to 100. So I tend to leave it with the new reduced total as a reminder to myself that I made a change to it. So I would leave it like this, um, adding up to 98% because that would just be an indicator to me that I made a change from the original recipe. And so I can just remember that, oh yeah, this recipe started with 25% EPK um, and then I made this change to it. Um, so that's just kind of a little, something that I do um, that makes sense to me. But you can do it however you like. If you're, um, if this is your new recipe, never looking back, then you can normalize it to 100 and then that's your new recipe and that's um, all good. Conclusion. So in the end, we removed 10% EPK from the total recipe and we replaced it with 8.5% calcined EPK. This can also be worded as for every 10 grams of EPK that you remove from a recipe, you can replace it with 8.5 grams of calcined EPK. The resulting recipe will have the exact same chemistry as the original one, but it will behave better before and during the firing. And that is that. So if you have any questions, um, please post them in the comment section. And I hope that was helpful for you to understand um, the role that, of calcined EPK in a glaze recipe. And if you are having issues with um, crawling or cracking before the firing, uh, this could be a solution. Um, it doesn't solve all the problems. So <clears throat> um, other reasons your glazes could be cracking or crawling is because of um, you know, the glaze is too thick. There are other materials that also kind of absorb 
water and then um, and then they shrink when they dry like grossly borate. Um, but if you are having this problem, go to your glaze recipe, see how much clay is in the recipe. So clay could be EPK, uh, ball clay, fire clay, red art, um, any of the clays. If that percentage is more than 20%, then I would consider this as a solution. Um, if you have questions, feel free to post them to the Facebook group and I'd be happy to look at your recipe and help you decide whether you should be um, replacing some of your EPK with calcined EPK. So if there are no questions, then I will let you go. I hope you all have a really good day. Um, and if you're watching the replay, please post your questions and I will come back and answer them for you. And then this video will be posted to my blog post, which you can find at bit.ly forward slash calcine kaolin. Um, Kareen says, great info and explanation. Thank you so much. Have a great long weekend. Oh yeah, it's a long weekend. I don't work on Mondays, so I often forget when long weekends are. So yeah, you have a great long weekend too. Um, yeah, and it's September, summer's over, but it's a beautiful day here, so I'm going to enjoy it. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.